um pa kindly ask navin to join again now proceed pa uh, yuvashri definition of gravimetric method then their types okay. their principles mm. and uh, purity of precipitate okay in that what are all the parameters we have discussed for precipitation post precipitation okay then common ion effect solubility okay okay hmm. then difference between co precipitation and post precipitation we have discussed then what else we have seen then estimation of barium yeah. sulfate Mm hmm. Estimation of barium sulfate by gravimetric method. We have discussed the procedure behind that. We have discussed. Okay, but thank you, Yuvashree. Anybody you. else want to share the points regarding um, gravimetric method? Yubesh. Yubesh, can you give answers on gravimetry? अरविंद अच्छन ओनली नाइंटी सेवन जॉइंड वॉट अबउट अदर थ्री मेबर्स एबसेंट गोपीनाथ एस मधुमित्र so nobody is ready to give answer again we anyway, thank you yuvashri so whoever i am call, calling if you are not able to answer you will be noted in the next class you must give answers okay so let's move on to the class now with disotization titration so before that if you want uh, let's revise once again the slides what we have seen for uh, gravimetry then we'll move on to the next topic disotization titration okay just wait i will uh, present gravimetry once again so that all will re recollect the points then we'll move on to the next topic okay so in gravimetry hope you can uh, find the um, presentation slide of gravimetric method so in gravimetric method according to syllabus we have discussed principle and steps involved in gravimetric analysis various concepts and steps involved in gravimetric methods of analysis then second purity of the precipitate since formation of precipitate only occurs and uh, the basic uh, procedure is making the solute uh, to get as uh, to form as precipitate and that precipitate is dried and weighed uh, for gravimetric analysis so that we need to discuss about the purity of the precipitate under that co precipitation and post precipitation we have seen along with that other parameters which affects purity of the precipitate also has been discussed like solubility product common ion effect this all then we have seen estimation of barium sulfate uh, taking an example of barium sulfate estimation the concepts has been discussed mm. so in this under principle and uh, steps involved in gravimetry we have seen what is gravimetry what are the types of gravimetry some examples on the types of gravimetry then principle behind the gravimetric method steps involved a scheme representation of steps involved in gravimetric method uh, and that what is digestion and oswald ripening we have seen then under purity of uh, precipitate what is precipitate and what is solubility product what is common ion effect mm, then difference between co precipitation and post precipitation uh, then examples of um, precipitate and precipitant analyte this all we have seen for gravimetric method what kind of analyte is analyzed and what is the precipitant and what is the precipitate we are adding and getting uh, what are the products uh, you can uh, go through these examples for getting the precipitates then we have seen estimation of barium sulfate in that procedure follows uh, objectives uh, principles involved in that procedure followed for estimation of barium sulfate and how the calculation is made mm? 
so with this uh, we have completed uh, the last class uh, with the gravimetric method so all the concepts has been uh, discussed now let's move on to the disotization titration that is the second part Okay. In unit 3 only, we are going to discuss about disotization titration. So with this uh, title, unit 3 will get over. So we'll be moving on to after this unit 4. Mm -hmm. And the last titration part will be discussed under unit 4. Now, uh, as the last part of unit 3, let's move on to the disotization titration. So from the title itself, it indicates that diaso, some diaso compound is going to form a so compound hmm, during this titration reaction. So it is a disotization is a chemical reaction occurs during the titration taking place. Okay, like uh, precipitation titration, precipitate has been formed. In gravimetric method, we have weighed the precipitate formed. In acid-base titration, neutralization reaction taking place. Likewise, in different uh, titration methods, some chemical reaction is taking place. That chemical reaction is monitored during the titration. Like Likewise, in disotization titration, we are going to see about disotization process. So this is the chemical reaction is going to take place in this type of titration. So now we have to see how the diaso dies. Um, Azo compounds will be forming like dyes. Dyes means colored compounds. Uh, so in the form of diaso compound, let's see uh, how this diaso compound is formed. Uh, that too, the um, reaction should be stoichiometric. Okay, during the titration, at what condition this dyes are forming, and how we are analyzing through titration methods. That is volumetric methods that we are going to discuss today. Got it? All are listening, no? Yes, ma'am. Uh, clear, right? My voice is clear, no? Okay, 98 out there. Two absentees on. Just mention who are uh, two absentees. Okay, let's proceed. So what is disotization titration? Diaso means some diaso dye is going to form uh, through chemical reaction. That is the process called disotization. And we are going to uh, titrate the analyte, which is going to form diaso dyes through titration method. That is volumetric method. That is the concept you are going to discuss in brief about uh, disotization method. Mm, let's see the contents, what you are go, uh, going to see uh, under disotization method. Means, according to your syllabus, it is of uh, three titles uh, we are going to see. One is basic principles behind disotization titration, then methods followed in disotization titration, then applications of this. What kind of substances are analyzed, are analyzed, are analyzed by um, disotization method. Okay. So what three titles we are going to discuss? Basic principles, methods, and applications. Hmm? What are all the basic concepts behind disotization reaction huh? and titration? And what are all the methods, types of disotization titration? Hmm? Then applications, where it is applicable. And what are the fields and what are all the substances it is applicable to analyze? Now let's move on to the basic principles. Before that, let's see about introduction on disotization method. Uh, so the disotization titration is nothing but just a minute. Can you see the wordings clearly? Hmm. In the PPT slides, whether you can observe the wordings, whether it is readable. If not, kindly mention so that I can increase the font size. Okay. Some people would have uh, monitoring in the mobiles only. Classes you will be observing in mobile. So, you may not see the wordings. Uh, so, if you are not able to observe some wordings, kindly inform me so that I will increase the font size. Hmm? So let's see about introduction. The disodization titration is nothing but the conversion of the primary ar aromatic amine. No down primary aromatic amine. Hope you will be knowing what is primary aromatic amine. Okay. To a diazonium compound. Mm, that is NH2 uh, amines. NH2 containing compounds. Uh, amines that is called as primary aromatic amine. Where secondary will be having NH2. 
tertiary will be having n likewise uh, so nh2 group containing compounds will form a diazonium compound mm, that is the conversion of primary aromatic amine to a diazonium compound is the basic concept behind a diazotification method uh, and this process was first discovered in 1853 and was applied to the synthetic dye industry it was applied to synthetic dye industry okay diazotization means you want to remember some colored reaction and the two dye formation occurs okay and it was discovered in 1853 mm. the reaction mechanism was first proposed by peter grison mm. it was proposed by peter grison mm. yeah, in the year of 1853 okay then in this method the primary aromatic amine is reacted with sodium nitrate that's what we are going to discuss in brief in the coming principles and theory here i have given as a summary okay so in this method the primary aromatic amine is reacted with just a second huh? Uh, so in this method the primary aromatic amine is reacted with sodium nitrite note on the reagent nitrite you should have heard sodium nitrate it is not sodium nitrate it is sodium nitrite uh, that is going to react with primary aromatic amine in acidic medium to form diazonium salt so in what condition it forms uh, diazonium salt um, in acidic medium when it reacts with sodium nitrite okay and this method is first used in the determination of dyes this is about introduction of diazonium uh, diazotization titration mm? it is the reaction is going to take place between primary aromatic amine at what condition in acidic medium and what reagent it is going to react sodium nitrate nitrite mm? and what is going to form diazonium salt and this is of dye okay diazonium is a dye that is going to form through this titration and when it was discovered in 1853 who was discovered peter uh, grison mm? and which industry it was first applied in the tech dye industry okay so with this introduction let's move on to the first content of diazotization titration that is basic principles hmm? so what is basic principle you should have understood the reaction is going to take place uh, take place between um, the primary aromatic amine and sodium nitrite okay this is what primary aromatic amine and it is going to react with sodium nitrate in the uh, acidic medium hydrochloric acid in presence of hydrochloric acid so hydrochloric acid is added to maintain acidic medium mm? so in that acidic medium sodium nitrate will react with the primary aromatic amine this will be of your analyte primary aromatic amine will be of your analyte and it will be reacting with sodium nitrite in presence of acidic medium hydrochloric acid to obtain nitro uh, diazonium salt mm? this is the diazonium salt n triple bond n containing groups are called as diazo to uh, nitrogen group uh, and attached so it is called diazonium salt mm. salt means it is uh, attached with chloride uh. so sodium chloride uh, potassium chloride likewise different salts you should have seen so likewise this is diazonium salt diazonium chloride is forming okay so what are all the reagents are reacting with primary aromatic amine sodium nitrite where nitrate is no3 mm. oxygen will be 3 here uh, two oxygen atoms are attached to nitrogen so it is nitrite uh, sodium nitrite and when it is reacting with the hydrochloric acid and uh, this two reagents it will convert the primary amine into diazonium salt of it mm -hmm. and sodium chloride and water are removed from the reaction so this is what the basic reaction takes place now let's see the remaining points and this sodium nitrite is added to the solution of amine in the presence of acid at 0.5 degree celsius 
sorry 0 to 5 degrees celsius so this is the temperature condition we need to maintain during this disonium salt formation okay so what condition it is the, the reaction is taking place at 0 to 5 degrees celsius temperature mm -hmm. so in ice bath only the reaction and titration is to be carried out uh, always uh, throughout your titration uh, until completion of titration the temperature should be maintained between 0 and 5 degree celsius so in that temperature only sodium nitrite is added to the solution of amine in the presence of acid that means amine acid will be added to the amine uh, uh, and then that acid and amine substance our analyte should be maintained at the temperatures 0 and 5 degree celsius range um, after then sodium nitrate should be added to the solution okay so the amine reacts with the nitrous acid to form nitrous amine um, the amine reacts with nitrous acid so here what that will form first nitrous acid hmm, nit sodium nitrate will be converted to nitrous acid in presence of acid that is hydrochloric acid sodium nitrate and hydrochloric acid will react and form nitrous acid that's what given here as nitrous acid and this nitrous acid will react with amine to form nitrosamine hmm, and which is followed by tautomerization process uh, tautomerization so it is a, some a stereochemical process uh, and the water molecule is lost to form the diazonium ion so how diazonium ion is formed it follows various steps it undergoes various steps in the beginning hmm, uh, amine is added with the acid that is hydrochloric acid uh, to give acidic medium and the temperature is maintained between 0 and 5 degrees celsius after then sodium nitrite is uh, started add, add, adding to the solution and this sodium nitrite uh, in the acidic medium it will be converted to nitrous acid okay and this nitrous acid will react with the primary amine so sodium nitrate is not directly reacting with amine primary aromatic amine uh, which is reacting nitrous acid is reacting and it allows to form nitrosamine hmm? and this nitrosamine goes for tautomerization reaction where this nitrosamine lost one water molecule and to form disonium salt a uh, disonium ion mm. and this disonium ion is stabilized by the displacement of the positive charge uh, positive charge aromatic amine aromatic group will be having ortho and para positions right so that uh, stabilize uh, this a disonium salt formation or ion formation is stabilized by the displacement of the positive charge at the ortho and para positions of the ring so that the formed disonium ion will be stabilized mm. so the uh, so this is the a chemical reaction and basic principle followed between uh, behind the disotization uh, titration uh, what uh, actual chemical reaction takes place mm. the uh, combined reaction how we can say is um, in the simple form primary aromatic amine uh, is reacting with sodium nitrate in presence of acidic medium and it forms disonium salt that's it um, in brief how it was uh, discussed first the, the um, amine primary aromatic amine is added with acid to maintain the acidic medium and the temperature is maintained first uh, to the sample we are maintaining the conditions like hydrochloric acid acidic medium and temperature temperature at very low temperature is applied to the sample okay after then sodium nitrate the main reagent is added and this sodium nitrate is reacting with the hydrochloric acid and this hydrochloric acid and sodium nitrate is converted to nitrous acid and nitrous acid is reacting within this this is the second step when nitrous acid is reacting with the primary amine to form nitrous amine and which is uh, going for tautomerization reaction to give disonium ion and this will be stabilized by the display Displacement. displacement means removal of the positive charge at the ortho and para positions of the ring. So once it is displaced, disonium ion is stabilized. Next, we'll move on to the theory. Theory behind um, disodization uh, titration so when sodium nitrate is reacted with hydrochloric acid uh, the sodium chloride and nitrous acid are formed so this is the first reaction a reaction as we have discussed here uh, 
nitrous acid formation occurs okay so uh, when it occurs when sodium nitrate reacts with the hydrochloric acid it gives sodium chloride and nitrous acid see the structure of nitrous acid it is varying from nitric acid huh? why we are using the sodium nitrate means it is highly reactive when comparing with sodium nitrate huh? and sodium nitrate will readily form nitrous acid in acidic medium that's why sodium nitrate is or uh, uh, used for disodization titration okay so when sodium nitrite is re uh, reacted uh, with the hydrochloric acid what 99 are there who is um, left to join who is absent pa is there any doubt till this no response all are listening no hmm? whether all are listening let me know okay. listening ma'am okay pa okay thank you hmm. so when sodium nitrate is the first step sodium nitrate is reacted with hydrochloric acid hmm? we are discussing now theory behind disodization titration hmm? where uh, what are the reagents now it is interacting you know right uh, primary aromatic amine sodium nitrate then acidic medium for that hydrochloric acid then temperature to be maintained between 0 and 5 degrees celsius these are all the conditions we have followed uh, and likewise uh, let's discuss the theory in brief uh, so first reaction is what sodium nitrate when it is added to hydrochloric acid at the temperature conditions of 0 to 5 degrees celsius it will be converted to nitrous acid mm. sodium chloride and nitrous acid this nitrous acid is highly reactive and it is next going to react with primary amine mm. so the obtained nitrous acid is reacted with the primary aromatic amine to form diazonium salt mm. so the excess of nitrous acid this excess of nitrous acid will be removed by the addition of ammonium sulfamate solution what solution is added ammonium sulfamate so it will be removing the excess amount of nitrous acid Mm. so nitrous acid will be readily reacting with the primary aromatic amine it is highly reactive uh, so that only sodium nitrite is converted to nitrous acid and this nitrous acid reacts with primary aromatic amine mm. at what condition 0 to 5 degrees celsius uh, then it is converted to acidic medium why we are maintaining to uh, provide uh, sodium nitrite to convert sodium nitrite to nitrous acid so once all the nitrous acid is formed and it will be reacting with primary aromatic amine and it converts it into diazonium salt diazonium salt after then this diazonium this excess of nitrous acid will be removed from the reaction uh, and interference of this nitrous acid will be eliminated by means of adding ammonium sulfamate ammonium sulfamate solution uh, so that all nitrous acid will be uh, removed from the reaction uh, so the end point once uh, all the primary aromatic amine that is our analyte of say, taken amount is converted to diazonium salt uh, it completes the reaction diazonization reaction means primary aromatic amine has given completely formed diazonium salt mm? once the reaction is completed it reaches end point uh, so now let's see how the deduction of end point takes place in the diazonization method uh, so the end point is detected by the formation of blue color with starch iodide paper so what is your indicator starch iodide paper like litmus paper will be having a starch iodide paper it is called as external indicator okay starch iodide paper is external indicator so it composed of starch and iodide potassium iodide iodide ion huh? so when starch reacts with iodide ion it gives blue color iodine mm? uh, uh, reaction of starch and iodine will give blue color that is the indication of completion of the reaction if uh, no primary uh, aromatic amine is existed once all the um, uh, but uh, all the uh, um, sorry wait. all the primary aromatic amine forms diazonium salt Uh, what will be the actual reaction takes place means in starch iodide paper hmm? 
uh, iodine means uh, potassium iodide will react with hydrochloric acid whereby it forms potassium chloride and hydrogen iodide and hydrogen iodide reacts with the nitrous acid that is excess of nitrous acid uh, then it gives iodine okay it is iodine it is getting oxidized to iodine and this iodine reacts with starch mucilage it gives blue color end point okay so how you are getting blue color end point once the reaction is completed this excess nitrous acid will be there no when our uh, uh, nitrous acid in reaction with primary aromatic amine it will not not give blue color with the starch iodide paper so once the reaction is completed the excess drop of uh, nitrous acid will react with the starch iodide paper and it oxidizes this nitrous acid oxidizes hydro uh, hydrogen iodide to iodine this is reduced to form of iodine this is oxidized to form of iodine in presence of iodine the starch mucilage will react with iodine so in starch iodide paper iodide is converted to iodine by means of which reagent nitrous acid where we have got nitrous acid um, excess of nitrous acid after uh, conversion of primary aromatic amine to diazonium salt we have got Uh, iodine and this iodine is uh, reacted with starch mucilage starch mucilage will be added with the paper that is what starch uh, and it gives blue color end point so appearance of this blue color represents the end point of titration that means it indicates all the primary aromatic amine has formed diazonium salt only nitrous acid is there and this nitrous acid oxidizes hydrogen iodide to iodine and this iodine reacts with the starch and this starch gives blue color the reaction between iodine and starch gives blue color in point so that appearance of blue color is the end point for diazotization titration okay and this is prepared by immersion immersing the filter paper in the starch mucilage and potassium iodide solution so that it is called starch iodide paper okay and this potassium iodide will be converted to potassium chloride by means of hydrochloric acid thereby hydrogen iodide is formed and this hydrogen iodide is reducing agent And when it is reacted with nitrous acid, it will be oxidized to iodine. Okay, and it will be converted to nitric oxide and two molecules of water. It will be removed, uh, and this iodine will react with the starch mucilage. Will give the blue color end point. So this is the theory behind uh, your um, diazotization titration. So what all we have discussed? The first reaction is what sodium nitrate is added uh, to the solution of amine. Uh, and in the acidic medium so when it is added sodium nitrate will uh, immediately react with hydrochloric acid and it will form nitrous acid so this is the first reaction sodium nitrate reacts with the hydrochloric acid and it will be converted to nitrous acid um, and this nitrous acid is reacting with the analyte primary aromatic amine gives diazonium salt uh, and uh, this excess of nitrous acid will be removed by ammonium sulfate um, and uh, once the reaction is completed the excess drop of uh, nitrous acid will react with the starch iodide paper where it contains iodide mm. and this iodide will be converted to iodine oxidized to iodine by nitrous acid and this nitrous acid will react with the starch to give blue color so appearance of blue color is the uh, end point of titration mm. now let's move on to the procedure behind uh, diazotization titration so procedure also follows what Uh, the same um, what are the reagents we are uh, we need to take primary aromatic amine and the hydrochloric acid concentrated hydrochloric acid actually not diluted it is concentrated uh, hydrochloric acid and the temperature maintenance between 0 to 5 degree celsius uh, and then what other reagents we need to add hmm so and just type the reagents in the chat box what are all the reagents we need to use for uh, diazotization method primary aromatic amine sodium nitrite concentrated hydrochloric acid starch iodide paper then temperature maintenance between 0 and 5 degree celsius uh, temperature maintenance between 0 to 5 degree celsius what will be the end point blue color appearance of blue color appearance of blue color okay nitrous acid uh, sodium nitrite 
uh, hydrochloric acid and the appearance of blue color is the end point uh, so that is the reaction uh, common reaction behind disodization method mm. let's move on to the procedure behind disodization method so the general procedure is followed by weighing the sample and transferring it is generally uh, procedure is discussed no uh, specific quantity and all here mentioned uh, so um, we'll be following the weighing of the sample and transferring it into the standard flask then the concentrated hydrochloric acid and potassium bromide are added the rest of volume uh, is filled with a distilled water the resulting solution is known as the standard solution the appropriate volume of standard solution is pipetted out and the temperature is maintained at 0 and 5 degrees celsius then the solution is titrated with sodium nitrate solution so the titration or a titrant is sodium nitrate titrant burette content is sodium nitrate here mm. until the starch iodide paper turns into blue color starch iodide paper is called external indicator external means we are not adding starch iodide paper or uh, starch iodide solution inside the conical flask content like uh, how you are adding the indicators in other titration likewise will not add inside the uh, content of analyte we will be using it as external indicator where a drop of your conical flask content will be kept over the starch iodide paper and the reaction is monitored for color change okay so when it is changing its color to blue color that indicates that represents the uh, end point of titration uh, and the another procedure is after maintaining the conical flask temperature that is uh, between 0 and uh, 5 degrees celsius the pair of platinum electrodes is immersed uh, and this is um, electrometric deduction like uh, potentiometric deduction uh, potentiometric and conductometric like uh, electrometric methods of deduction already we have discussed this type of deduction method in acid base titration itself and here also this is applicable mm. then the electrodes are connected to the potentiometer slowly titrated with sodium nitrate solution until a permanent deflection is observed at the end point so these two are end point methods one is adding a starch iodide paper means finding end point through starch iodide paper so this is indicator reduction method and this is electrometric deduction method where a pair of electrodes are immersed in the solution to monitor the dye formation and to monitor the end point deduction where deflection occurs in the end point when you draw the graph and that deflection represents the end point so this will be very accurate comparing with the indicator deduction method so there are two types of deduction methods as we have discussed earlier in other uh, titration methods indicator deduction method is there electrometric deduction method is there the both the deduction methods are applicable for uh, disodization method also disodization titration also so this is about procedure now let's see different types of end point deduction as uh, we have seen one point here as potentiometric deduction and one as indicator deduction let's see what other end point deduction methods are applicable for disodization method mm. hope you have understood the uh, steps involved in disodization method uh, first you are taking in the conical flask just imagine in the conical flask i couldn't find any animation or uh, some uh, diagrammatic representation for disonium titration disodization titration that's why i'm explaining orally uh, just understand from the theory itself so once you perform in the lab um, then we could understand how the reaction takes place okay so you will be definitely performing before your exam and definitely you will be performing this so during that time you will come to know how the disonium salt is formed and what is the color how that starch iodide paper is used as external indicator and how the color change occurs and how we are maintaining the temperature between um, that means below 5 degrees celsius uh, how we are monitoring the temperature mm. that means the conical flask content totally should be kept in the ice bath until the completion of your titration process so once you add the primary aromatic amine in conical flask the weight amount of primary aromatic amine that is your analyte uh, is added to the conical flask and it is kept in the ice bath mm. and after then you add concentrated hydrochloric acid concentrated will be of uh, having highly um, it will be highly hard solution right so when you keep it in the um, ice bath it will be getting cooled to uh, 0 to 5 degrees celsius and the temperature is monitored by means of um, 
your thermometers and then um, you need to add uh, sodium nitrate uh, sodium nitrate from the burette once the sodium nitrate is added the hydrochloric acid will convert the sodium nitrate into nitrous acid and this nitrous acid will react with what uh, our primary aromatic amine to give nitrosamine and nitrosamines uh, will for, go for tautomerization process and it will give disonium salt and this all will take place at 0 to 5 degrees celsius only mm, temperature should be very low in disodization method after conversion of disonium salt the every drop of the reaction is kept on the starch iodide paper and we need to monitor the chemical reaction whether it has been completed once all the disonium salt has been formed from primary aromatic amine only nitrous acid is left over and this nitrous acid will react with iodide present in the starch iodide paper and it will be converted to iodine that means oxygen oxidization oxidation process occurs there that converts the iodide to iodine this oxidized iodine what it does it react with starch present in the starch iodide paper and it will be converted to blue color so the formation of this blue color indicates the end point of titration so this is the main mechanism behind uh, disodization method uh, and the tight end is sodium nitrite in burette we will be preparing known concentration of sodium nitrate unknown concentration of primary aromatic amine is determined from this titration method mm. Understood now. So, in point deduction methods, let's discuss. First one is using starch iodide as an external indicator. That's what till now we have discussed regarding in point deduction as external indicator. Mm. So, in other titrations, we have not used any external indicator. We have used many uh, indicators inside as internal indicators only, like phenolphthalein. We have added in conical flask uh, in acid based titration and in uh, non aqueous titration, crystal violet is added uh, along with the analyte um, and then and what other titrations we have seen precipitation method in most method Wolhart's method uh, potassium chromate uh, ferric ammonium sulfate uh, ferric alum this is all we have used but it is no uh, none of the indicators are external indicators what we have discussed earlier but in diazotization method uh, specifically we are using external indicator as starch iodide paper mm. and next method of uh, indication deduction is immersing the platinum electrodes okay deduction of endpoint is by immersing platinum electrodes and this is called as potentiometric deduction electrometric deduction and the method is known as dead stop in point method it is very accurate when the pair of platinum electrodes are immersed inside the solution when it reaches the end point that means once all the reactions are completed uh, then uh, it will be suddenly stopping the titration so at the end point uh, it will be stopped so that is called dead stop end point method so you will get very accurate end point when you are adding the uh, indicators hmm? inside the solution the color change may be very intense or very pale color you will be getting so you will not get a very accurate in point but with the uh, electrometric deduction you will get very accurate in point uh, deduction that too with the dead stop in point method will be getting a very accurate method uh, and regarding dead stop in point method and uh, immersing about two uh, pair of um, platinum electrodes all will be discussed under potentiometric method as for the chapter that you will be studying and learning in brief and the chemical reaction behind uh, this dead stop endpoint technique will be discussed under potentiometric titration okay uh, in the fifth unit okay and that to be included here when you have uh, discussed all the concepts behind dead stop endpoint method the same to be discussed under in brief under this uh, title okay endpoint deduction for disodization method immersing pairs of uh, platinum electrodes what type of electrodes platinum electrodes uh, and it uh, detects the endpoint that means it stops uh, the um, two uh, electrodes one will be polarizable another one will be non polarizable electrode um, the polarization will be stopped at the endpoint once the endpoint is reached uh, so that indicates uh, reaction is completed so accurate deduction of endpoint very accurate deduction of endpoint is achieved by using this dead stop endpoint method mm. and the third method is like um, 
you will be adding potassium iodide uh, to the uh, conical flask itself here we will be adding potassium iodide to the conical flask itself and it will be converted by nitrous acid to iodine potassium iodide will be converted to iodine and you are using starch um, yes, i mean the, you will be adding starch to the solution and this starch will react with iodine to give um, what blue color what actually reaction is we are not using starch iodide paper here we are using solution form that means the internal indicator the starch and iodide are added inside the conical flask itself so when you are adding a starch and iodide potassium iodide is added in the uh, during the titration itself uh, so once all the nitrous acid reacts with your um, primary aromatic amine the disodization uh, or diazonium ion formation once it is completed uh, the excess of potassium iodide potassium iodide already not excess already present in the conical flask will react with nitrous acid what reaction is taking place potassium iodide and nitrous acid and nitrous acid is what uh, already we have discussed here in this um, reaction nitrous acid what it does it converts uh, it converts potassium iodide when it when you are adding to the solution a solution is already having hydrochloric acid right hydrochloric acid concentrated hydrochloric acid for acidic media we have added so that will be converting this potassium iodide to hydrogen iodide and this hydrogen iodide is in reduced form it will react with nitrous acid um, and this nitrous acid is converting hydrogen iodide to iodine iodine is oxidized form uh, and this will be acting with starch and it will give blue color so towards the end point you need to add starch solution inside the conical flask uh, and it will react directly with the iodine since the excess uh, nitrous acid after reaction after completion of disonium salt formation this excess nitrous acid is converting hydrogen iodide to iodine and this will react with the starch solution to give blue color so appearance of blue color is the end point so one category of deduction is using starch iodide paper as external indicator we are not adding iodide or starch inside the solution another category is adding the starch and iodide inside the solution where starch is added towards the end point where potassium iodide is added to um, means along with the analyte and other reagent so this is how the end point deduction methods are followed and it is directed by a disodization methods first one is starch iodide paper using as external indicator and another one is dead stop end point technique using pair of uh, platinum electrodes um, and they will stop uh, its uh, mechanism at uh, accurately at uh, towards the end point when it reaches the end point so it is called dead stop end point technique means the titration itself will be stopped or uh, the instrument will be automatically stopped when the reaction is completed uh, so it is very accurate method and another one is adding potassium iodide and starch solution inside the conical flask itself during the titration to determine the end point so these are all the end point deduction methods so let's discuss uh, the remaining concepts methods and all in the next class okay these are all the types of methods advantages disadvantages applications we'll discuss in the next class mm -hmm. so with this we'll stop with the today's class okay only we have discussed principle theory and then what are things procedure uh, uh, procedure until procedure we have discussed today mm -hmm. this three topics under basic principles we have seen and the basic principles we have seen what are all the sub topics mm -hmm. principle then theory then procedure in point deduction these are all the concepts we have seen so remaining factors other conditions to be maintained everything will be discussing in the next class okay understood no fine mari i mean and thanks for all pavitra roja divya devrajan na uh, parkavi and uh, rajkumar afsana jeevita no jeevita has not answered and this guys who all have answered uh, i appreciate thank you thank you for listening to the class is there any doubt you are clear no with the disodization reaction 
and the titration method titration means titrant and titrant will be there and along with the deduction methods will be followed here titrant uh, uh, is titrant is sodium nitrate solution known concentration of sodium nitrate nitrate solution where uh, titrate is your analyte primary aromatic amine titrate is primary aromatic amine only primary aromatic amine will form a disonium salt that's why we are very particular to primary aromatic amine it is known concentration of sodium nitrite okay clear now so we'll stop uh, today's class with this thank you all thank you all take care be safe and um, valen has prepared nicely about a steaming process huh? water steaming process uh, would you like to see that video just wait let me give that video play that video just all of you be in the class itself so let me download his video and play now just wait huh? i'll have you be patient for 2 seconds The video is not uh, seen. Uh, can you see the video now? Whether uh, all could observe the video? No. You couldn't see, ah? Uh? Any response? No. It is uh, not able to what um, present, pa? I don't know how it is to be presented. Uh, it is not opening with the tab. I couldn't find in the tab for a video and animation. Mm. 
how will i find okay anyway in whatsapp group you have seen no hmm? with that we'll stop uh, i'll share once again hope you all would have seen in the class group i have uh, posted the video right so uh, i'll have you um, see in the, uh, from that uh, group itself video okay thank you all and i appreciate valen for immediate response regarding this video awareness video okay thank you thank you one and all we'll stop the class